Marami sa liwanag ng kaisipan at sa pagkakataon maipagpatuloy ang pag-aaral ng mga kabataan. Gabay mo po ang bawat isa sa amin. Ano man ang bahagi na nagyanampanan na huwag maging maayos at matagumpay ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral na aming gagawin sa araw na ito. Patawarin mo po kami sa aming mga pagkulang at pagkakasala. At sa aming paggawa, ikaw po ang aming makasala. Amen.
What's my art moms? Your Wonder Art teachers, and welcome to the third leg of our Art Wonderful expedition here in Valenzuela Live. Are you ready to time travel once more? And explore different places full of wonderful things. Buckle up and be ready with your paper, pen, and learning packet as we take the Art Wonderful expedition on the neoclassic and romantic periods only here in The Art Wonderland. Time travel and sees the world with full fun of learning. This for the crafts, the sense, color, and traditions. This is the Art Wonderland. But before we begin with our Art Wonderful expedition, let us first be reminded of the protocols to follow during the live streaming class. Protocols to follow during the live streaming class. Respect everyone. Agree to recognize and abide by the protocols in the live stream and respect the feelings, rights, or traditions of everyone. No hate speech. Do not express or discourage violence towards a person or group based on something such as race, religion, sex, or sexual orientation. Be guided with the anti-cyberbullying law. Make sure that everyone feels safe. Bullying of any kind isn't allowed, and degrading comments about things such as race, religion, culture, sexual orientation, gender, or identity will not be tolerated. No promotion of products or items. Give more to this group than you take. Selling of products, self-promotion, spam, and irrelevant links aren't allowed. Use appropriate words in giving suggestions, comments, and queries. We're all in this together to create a welcoming environment. Let's treat everyone with respect. Healthy debates are natural, but kindness is required. After the FB live streaming, attend follow-up discussion in the different platforms provided by your subject teachers such as Messenger, Google Classroom, Google Meet, or MS Teams. Maximize the features of the different platforms to deepen your understanding of the competencies with the help of your subject teachers. I hope everyone will be guided by the protocols for us to maintain order during our session. At the end of our Art Wonderful Expedition, you are expected to analyze art elements and principles in the production of work following a specific art style from the neoclassic and romantic periods. Identify distinct characteristics of arts during the neoclassic and romantic periods. Identifies representative artists from the neoclassic and romantic periods. Reflects on and derive the mood, idea, or message from selected artworks. Explains the use or functions of artworks by evaluating their utilization and combination of art elements and principles. Uses artworks to derive the traditions, or history of the neoclassic and romantic periods. Compares the characteristics of artworks produced in the neoclassic and romantic periods. Before you get fully excited, here once again our art travel buddy, Bonky, to guide and help you in accomplishing different tasks in our Art Wonderful expedition. Hello there, Art Wanderers! Let's play a game called Remember When to review the previous leg of our journey, which is about the arts of the Renaissance and Baroque period. You will determine the art description or statement in each number belongs to the Renaissance or Baroque periods. You may key in your answers in our comments section, or you may write them directly on your answer sheets. I will give you 5 seconds for each item. Are you ready? Let's begin. Number 1. Tangient, chiaroscuro, sfumato, and uni one were the four distinct painting techniques used during this time. If your answer is Renaissance period, affirmative. You got it right. Number 2. Sculptures from this era, which were typically larger than life-size, have a similar sense of dynamic movement, as well as an active use of space.
If you answered Baroque period, that is correct. Number 3. Michelangelo, Da Vinci, Raphael, and Donatello were famous artists during this time. If you answered Renaissance period, that is right. Number 4. This art period was distinguished by accurate anatomy, scientific perspective, and a more detailed landscape. If you answered Renaissance period, you are also right. Number 5. Tenebroso, Fresco, and Rococo were popular styles during this time. If your answer is Baroque period, you are indeed doing the right decision. Number 6. During this time, paintings depicted key elements of Catholic dogma, either directly in biblical works or indirectly in imaginary or symbolic works. If your answer is Baroque period, you are correct. Number 7. This period's architecture was distinguished by its symmetry and balance. If your answer is Renaissance period, you are doing great. And for the last number, number 8. During this time, architecture was designed to create spectacles and illusions. As a result, the Renaissance's straight lines were replaced with flowing curves. If your answer is Baroque period, you are certainly correct. Great job Art Wanderers! And to give us an idea for the next Art Wonderful task, here is Ma'am Ivy. Thank you Bonky for that Art Wonderful task. Let us now see what you know about the representative artists and famous artworks that represent two art periods such as the Neoclassic period and the Romantic period. By having your second task titled, Let's Classify. You will classify the artworks and artists in the two periods where they belong, such as the Neoclassic period or the Romantic period. You may write your answers on your answer sheet or in a notebook, or simply type them in the comment section. Take it away, Bonky! Number 1. Eugene Delacroix If you answered Romantic period, you are correct. Number 2. The Apotheosis of Homer If your answer is Neoclassic period, that is right. Number 3. Lion of Lucerne If you answered Neoclassic period, you are also right. Number 4. Francois Roud If your answer is Romantic period, you are doing great. Number 5. Antonio Canova If you answered Neoclassic period, that is correct. Number 6. The Raft of the Medusa If your answer is Romantic period, you are indeed doing the right decision. Number 7. Palace of Westminster If your answer is Romantic period, affirmative. You got it right. And for the last number, number 8. Jacques Louis David. If your answer is Neoclassic period, you are certainly correct. Wonderful. You've identified the different artists and artworks that belong to Neoclassic Romantic period. Congratulations! Back to you, Ma'am Ivy.
to give us a tour of the neoclassic period's art wonderful world, here's Sir Harold, our wonder art teacher. Thank you, Ma'am Ivy. Neoclassicism arose in the middle of the 18th century as a reaction to the rejection of the Rococo and the late Baroque style. In this art wonderful expedition, we will explore the neoclassic art. Their influences can still be seen today in the style of paintings, sculptures, and other artworks adopted by well-known artists around the world as well as by some of our own national artists, some existing architectural structures reflect the traits and characteristics of the neoclassic period. You will learn about the art history and characteristic of neoclassicism, as well as the artists and their artworks who made their names during the periods. Neoclassicism or neoclassic is derived from the Greek word neos, which means new, and the Latin word classicus, which means first class. The term neoclassicism refers to Western movements in decorative and visual arts. It also applies to literature, theater, music, and architecture that are inspired by the classical art and culture of Greece and Rome. The Neoclassic movement occurred during the Age of Reason, also known as the Age of Enlightenment in the 18th century. The revival of inter Greek and Romantic prompted the development of the art style. Paintings, sculpt, and archer from the Neoclassical Jepikman history elevator Roman hopes. The characteristics of classic art, the rebirth of Roman history, composition, the diagonals to show the emotion or moment rather than regular moment, low color, overall lighting, and classic nature. But before we go any further on our tour, let us distinguish between the two terms neoclassicism and classicism so that we are not confused or misled about the two art periods. Neoclassicism is the revival of interest in the classical ideals and forms that influenced European and American society during the 18th and 19th centuries through thought, politics, and fine arts. It refers to art forms that were created after ancient times but were inspired by them. This epoch stems from the Classicism movement. Classicism, on the other hand, is the period during which Greek and Roman principles and styles were reflected in society. Use caution when combining the two terms. Classicism refers to art created in antiquity or inspired by it later. Whereas, Neoclassicism always refers to art inspired by ancient times but created later. Let us now turn our attention to Neoclassical painting. Neoclassical artists embrace the ideals of orders and moderation restoring the artistic interpretations of the classical Greek and Roman history to realistic depictions. Neoclassical painters place a high value on the costumes, settings, and details of classical subject matter, while avoiding distracting details and retaining as much historical accuracy as possible. Jack Louis David is a well-known French painter in the neoclassical style, widely regarded as the preeminent painter of his time. His painting subjects are more historically based. David's most famous work was the death of Marut, which depicted a revolutionary martyr. This is a portrait of the assassinated French revolutionary leader, Jean-Paul Marut. Napoleon Crossing the Alps 
depicts a highly idealized view of Napoleon and his army's actual crossing of the Alps through the Great St. Bernard Pass in May 1800. And the Oath of Verati. A large painting depicting a scene from a Roman legend about a feud between Rome and Alba Longa. The three brothers who appear to be willing to give their lives for the sake of Rome are shown saluting their father who holds their swords out for them. John August Dominic Angra studied under Jack Louis David and was influenced by Italian Renaissance painters such as Raphael. His paintings are typically of naked people, portraits, and mythological figures. He is regarded as one of the greatest exponents of academic art and one of the greatest old masters of his time. Angra's famous portrait of Napoleon on the Imperial Rome depicted Napoleon in a Cadenation gown seated on his gold encrusted throne, his hand resting on smooth ivory bowls. During his reign, the corpse legislative, a branch of the French legislature, owned this painting. Napoleon, as a king of Italy, thought to have gone the painting. And the thesis of Homer was a state commissioned by Charles X to have himself remembered in the Louvre building works. The painting depicts an image of Homer receiving all of Rome's grises and modern-day brilliant men. Now let's look at some neoclassical sculptures. One of the great periods of public sculptures was the classical period. During Alexander the Great's reign, artists looked to Roman styles for inspiration as well as imitation. Antonio Canova was a prolific Italian sculptor best known for his marble sculptures depicting nude flesh. With his mythological compositions, he pioneered the use of pure contours to depict discrete sexual pleasures. Canova's most well-known work was Sight Revived by Cupid's Keys, a sculpture of Sight Awakened by Cupid's Keys, and George Washington, a marble sculpture of Washington that is currently on display at the North Carolina Museum of History. Another period is Bertel Torvalsen. Torvalsen was Denmark's first internationally acclaimed artist and created sculptures of mythological figures. Torvalsen's most well-known work was Christ, a marvel sculpture of the resurrected Christ, and the Lion of Lucerne, a sculpture of a dying lion in Lucerne, Switzerland, commemorates the Swiss guards who were massacred during the French Revolution in 1792. The Neoclassical Architecture is the final stop of our tour of the Neoclassical period. Neoclassical architecture emerged in the mid-18th century. It departs from the opulence of Rococo and late Baroque styles. In its purest form, Neoclassical architecture is a style derived primarily from Classical Greek and Roman architecture, as well as the architecture of the Italian architect Andrea Palladio. Neoclassical architecture is classified into three types, Temple style, Palladian style, and Classical block. A temple-style building has a design based on an ancient temple. During the Renaissance, architects focused primarily on applying classical elements to churches and modern structures such as palazzos and villas. A peristyle, a continuous line of column around a building, is a rare feature of Renaissance architecture. 
The most famous temple-style building of the neoclassical era are Pantheon in Paris, designed by Jacques Germain Soufflot and based on Greek mythology, and the British Museum in London, designed by Robert Smirk and based on Roman mythology. Palladian is the second type of neoclassical architecture. Palladian architecture is based on Andrea Palladio's villa building style. Some of the structures have a balustrade, which is a railing with vertical supports along the roof's edge. Vertical supports known as balusters or spindles are found within the balustrade and it is also a traditional method of crowning a building with a flat or low-lying roof. Robert Adam is the most well-known neoclassical Palladian architect. Many beautiful country houses were designed by him. The most well-known Palladian structure are two American civic structures designed by Robert Adam, the White House and the United States Capitol. These mansions demonstrate that while Palladian architecture shares certain basic characteristics derived from Palladio's villa, it can take many forms. The classical block is the last neoclassical architecture type. The building has a rectangular or square plan, a flat or roof and exterior rich in classical detail, with a repeated classical pattern or series of arches and or columns giving the impressions of massive, classically decorated rectangular block. The classical block aesthetic is also known as Beaux-Arts style, as it was primarily developed by the French Ecole de Beaux-Arts or School of Fine Arts. Classical block architecture thrived in the United States as well, particularly in New York. Henry LaBruce and Charles Garnier were the architects. The Library of St. Genevieve is Henry LaBruce's masterpiece, while Charles Garnier designed the most famous classical block of all, the Palais Garnier, a neo-baroque opera house. Let us now examine the various elements of neo classical arts it demonstrates order and solemnity in terms of values classical room patriotism courage and honor served as inspiration the tone is calm and rational and the subject matter depicts Greek and Roman history it employs stress drawing with lines rather than color and leaves no trace of brush stroke. The role of art is morally uplifting and inspirational. While the composition can be seen in most figures in the foreground. Lines are sharply defined through controlled brush strokes, emphasizing the linear style. Finally, the texture is smooth with no visible brush strokes. And that ends our art wonderful tour to the world of the neoclassical period. But wait, there's more. We will also explore the world of the romantic period with the guide of our wonder art teacher, Mom Ivy. Take it away, Mom Ivy. Thank you, Sir Harold. I think you are now ready to explore the period that sought to break new ground in the expression of emotion, both subtle and stormy. Welcome to the Romantic Period. It embraces distinctive themes such as longing for history, supernatural elements, social injustices, and nature. Landscape painting during this period became more popular due to the people's romantic adoration of nature. Romanticism is a reaction to the classical contemplative nature of neoclassical pieces. 
The characteristics of Romantic period are the following. It shows the height of action. Emotional extremes. Celebrated nature as out of control. Dramatic compositions. And heightened sensation of life and death moment. Now, let us begin with the portrait paintings and famous artists of the Romantic period that focus on emotion. Artists during this time express as much feeling and passion as it could be onto a canvas. Our first artist is Jean Louis Theodore Jarakov. Jarakov is the first French master and the leader of the French realistic school. His masterpieces are energetic, powerful, brilliantly colored, and tightly composed. His famous works were The Raft of the Medusa, that portrays the victims of a contemporary shipwreck. The people on this raft were French immigrants en route to West Africa. Another one is Charging Chaser, an officer of the Chaser's commanding charge. And the insane woman, this is one of several portraits he made of the mentally ill that have a peculiar hypnotic power. The next artist that we have is Eugene Delacroix. Delacroix was considered the greatest French romantic painter of all. He achieved brilliant visual effects using small, adjacent strokes or contrasting color. He was the most influential to most romantic painters and eventually his technique was adopted and extended by Impressionist artists. His famous work was The Liberty Leading the People. This painting commemorates the July Revolution of 1830, which toppled King Charles X of France. A woman personifies liberty and leads the people forward over the bodies of the fallen, holding the flag of the French Revolution. The last artist that we have under portrait painting is Francisco Goya. Francisco Goya is a commissioned romantic painter by the King of Spain. He is also a printmaker regarded both as the last of the old masters and the first masters of the modern. These are his famous works of art. The 3rd of May. This is Goya's masterpiece thought to commemorate Spanish resistance to Napoleon's armies during the occupation of 1808 in the Peninsular War. Saturn devouring his son. This artwork depicts the Greek myth of the Titan Cronus, who fears that he will be overthrown by one of his children, ate each one upon their birth. The Burial of Sardine, a Spanish ceremony which is celebrated on Ash Wednesday and is a symbolical burial of the past to allow society to be reborn, transformed, and with new vigor. Now, let us proceed with the landscape painting during this period. Landscape painting depicts the physical world that surrounds us and includes features such as mountains, valleys, vegetation, and bodies of water. The sky is another important element shaping the mood of landscape painting. Landscape art ranges from highly detailed and realistic to impressionistic, romantic, and idealized. Famous landscape artists during the Romantic period are Theodore Rousseau and Jean-Baptiste Camille Corot. They are members of the Barbizon School, which is a circle of artists who held meetings in the village of Barbizon that led to the Romantic landscape painting in France. These are the famous works of Theodore Rousseau. Their Kleine feature and a landscape with a plowman. On the other hand, these are the artworks made by Jean-Baptiste Camille Corot, the Church of Maricel near Beauvoir, and Le Reposos Les Soles. Let us proceed to the next artworks during this period. Romantic sculpture can be divided into works that concern the human world, 
and those that concerned the natural world. The leading sculptors of each type were Ruth and Bard, respectively. The first sculptor we have is Francois Ruth. He is best known for his social art, which inspires and captures the interest of a broad public. He rejected the classical repose of 18th century and 19th century, French sculpture in favor of a dynamic, emotional style, and created many monuments that steered the public for generations. His famous sculptures were Jean d'Arc and the departure of volunteers, known as La Marseillaise. These works portrays the goddess liberty urging the forces of the French Revolution onward. Next is the most famous animal sculptor of time, none other than Don Luis Barre. He studied the anatomy of his subjects by sketching residents of the Paris Zoo. His works were Hercules sitting on a and saying a minor. We begin with the paintings and sculpt the Roman period. Now, let us our beautiful natural styles during this era. Gothic Revival, also known as Neo-Gothic or Victorian Gothic, may be considered the archetypal manifestation of Romanticism that began in the late 1740s in England. Given the romantic affinity for medieval nostalgia and the wild, fanciful nature of the Gothic style as opposed to the restraint and order of the Classicism, many Neo-Gothic buildings feature castellation which is the crenellated walls and towers in imitation of medieval castles. Indeed, heavily castled neo-Gothic buildings are often referred to as castles, even though they are never served as defensive purpose. Among them was Strawberry Hill, the most famous work of the decorative phase of the Gothic Revival. See? Gothic Revival became widely used for churches and civic buildings throughout the West, especially in Britain and the United States. Bricks and stones were both commonly used. Let us meet the architects who used Neo-Gothic style. Charles Barry is the name behind Britain's foremost Gothic Revival monument, the Westminster Palace, also known as the Houses of Parliament. And James Renwick, he has his crowning American work, the St. Patrick's Cathedral that can be found in Manhattan, New York. And that's it! We are done with the paintings, sculpture, and architectures at the Romantic period. I hope you gained knowledge of the different characteristics of each art piece during the Neoclassic and Romantic period. Now, let us call Sir Harold once again to discuss with you the comparison between these two periods. Thank you, Ma'am Ivy, for giving us a tour on the arts of the Romantic period. We can now compare their arts to Neoclassicism. The two movements, Neoclassicism and Romanticism, are diametrically opposed. They both exhibit distinct characteristics which are reflected in the artworks. Neoclassicism versus Romanticism Reason Nature is defined as human nature. Society is more important than the individual. Imitation Tradition Rules and order Mechanical form Imposed from without Logic Reason Attempted objectivity Town or cultivated landscape Constraint Conformity And cultivated Formal Social are all depicted in neoclassicism Romanticism on the other hand focuses on passion Nature is defined as natural environment, wood, mountains, etc. Individual is more important than society, originality, 
experimentation, freedom, organic form, growing from within, intuition, imagination, and emotion accepted subjectivity, country, preferably untainted nature, T, independence, rebellion, and the primitive become focal points. Neoclassicism and Romanticism are not the same thing. However, they both inspire people through the art pieces created by great artists. Through the images message, a painting expresses ideas and educates us. After our fun-filled journey to the world of Neoclassic and Romantic period, let us have another art wonderful task entitled who am I? You will identify among the given famous artists provided with a given description on each number. You will be guided by our art travel body, Bonky, on this another art wonderful task. Take it away, Bonky! Choices provided in each number. Antonio Canova. Eugene Delacroix. Francois Rude. Henry Labrist. Jean Augusta Dominique Angra. Robert Adam. Number 1. A French sculptor in favor of a dynamic emotional style and created so many monuments that stirred the public for generations. That's right. That is Francois Rude. Number 2. He was considered the greatest French romantic painter of all. He achieved brilliant visual effects using small, adjacent strokes of contrasting color. If you answer Eugene Delacroix, you are right. Number 3. He was known as the Palladian architect of the neoclassical who designed two well-known American civic buildings the White House and the United States Capitol. He had also designed many country houses. Correct. Robert Adam is the right answer. Number 4. He was a prolific Italian artist and sculptor who became famous for his marble sculptures that delicately rendered nude flesh. Did you answer Antonio Canova? You are right. Number 5. He was regarded as one of the great exemplars of academic art and one of the finest old masters of his era. It's Jean Augusta Dominique Angra. Great job! That was fantastic! You've identified the different famous artists from the Neoclassic and Romantic period. Congratulations! Artworks from the Neoclassic period were created in the late 18th century. These works of art are influenced by ancient Greece and Rome. Famous Neoclassic period artists include J.A.D. Angra, Jacques Louis David, Robert Smirk, Robert Adam, Antonio Canova, Jean Antoine Houdon, and Bertel Thorvaldsen. Neoclassic style can be found in paintings, sculptures, and architecture from the 18th century. Romanticism is diametrically opposed to neoclassicism. It is a response to the classical, contemplative nature of neoclassical works. It aspires to modernism and uses art to express emotion. Jean Louis Theodore Juricault, Eugene Delacroix, Francisco Goya, Francois Rood, and Antoine Louis Berry were all well-known artists. Landscape painting grew in popularity because of people's romantic adoration. For nature, the romantic landscape painting in France was led by Theodore Rousseau and Jean-Baptiste Camille Corot. In England, the Gothic Revival architectural movement began in the late 1740s. It was widely used for churches and civic buildings throughout the Western world, particularly in the United Kingdom and the United States. Now, we are very confident that you can already use the lesson we discussed today. Grab your pen and paper, write your answers on your notes, or you may directly type your answer in the comment section. 
Are you ready? Let us find out the answers. You will be given 5 seconds to answer each question. Number 1. Neoclassicism is the revival of a classical style of art treatment. The term came from the Greek words neos and classicus which means blank. A discover and restore. B new and first class. C new and traditional. D young and old. The career is letter B. First class. in the 18th century that puts emphasis imagination among the individualism impression see neoclassicism deromanticism if you answered letter d romanticism you are also correct number three Victorian Gothic began in the late 1740s in England that drew its inspiration in medieval architecture, this movement is also known as blank. A Byzantine Revival. B Gothic Revival. C Renaissance Revival. D Romanesque Revival. If you answered letter B, Gothic Revival, you are right. Number 4. A neoclassical style of building which gives an overall impression of an enormous, classically decorated rectangular block. A classical block. B. Palladian. C. Temple. D. Trabiated. If you answered letter A, classical block, you are also right. Number 5. It is an uncommon style of building during the Renaissance period, but it exploded in the neoclassical age. What is this structural design that features Perry style? A Palladian. B Temple. C Trabiated. D Vault. It's letter B, Temple. Perfect. Did you get all the answers correctly? Very good everyone. You all did great. Thank you so much, Bonky, and great job, Art Wanderers. It was another long journey from the neoclassical and romantic period. We hope you learned so much today. Once again, this is Sir Harold. And this is Ma'am Ivy. Your Wonder Art, art teachers, teachers leaving a quote from, from Alex Gray. Gray. Be an artist of consciousness. Your picture of reality is your most important creation. Make, Make it powerfully, powerfully profoundly beautiful. beautiful. Stay safe everyone, have a good day, and, and see you on our